All right, today we're going to talk about the Wing Chun stance, otherwise known as Yijikimi Ma. When you begin your training in the art, this is the very first thing that you learn. However, it's also going to be the most difficult thing for you to master. Um, in terms of explaining the stance, it's, it's actually pretty simple, but doing it, understanding it, uh, and all the other things that you have to be aware of, it can be quite overwhelming and it takes a lot of time in terms of uh, really developing the stance correctly. So what, what I'm going to do is go through the four different stages of opening up the stance and then I'm going to cover a few details in each of the stance uh, stages so that you kind of understand uh, some of the different components that you should be aware of as you're training through this. So uh, let's start with opening it up in stage one. So here I am, standing up straight with good posture, hands at my sides, heels together, toes slightly apart. When I cross my hands, it's going to be left over right, and then I'm going to flip or roll so that the palms are facing upward. I'm going to make a fist, and then pull back. Stage two is pretty simple. All I'm doing is tucking the hips, bending the knees, and then stage three, from the heels, I open the toes outward. And then stage four, from the balls of the feet, the heels turn out. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Um, however, there's so much more detail that you have to go into with this uh, to properly understand it. And so I'm going to turn to the side over here so you can see. After I get through all those pieces where I cross, roll, and then pull back, one thing that you have to make sure of is that you maintain that stretch in the spine when you're already standing with that good posture. All right? The reason why that's important is because there's an opposite motion occurring on the pullback, which is the shoulder going forward and the elbow going back. And in order for you to do that with that natural tension, um, you have to have that stretch at the top of the spine or at the base of the neck. Okay? Because if I don't have that, what ends up happening is you know, I kind of end up hunching, and when I pull, pull back with the elbow, I start feeling tension in the shoulder, all right? The spine stretch at the top actually relieves that tension right there. The other thing that's happening is that I have to make sure that when the elbow sinks, going backward, my forearm is parallel to the ground, and then my fist is about level with my chest, okay? Some of the common tendencies that you'll see is that people will get lazy or too relaxed, and then all of a sudden you see the forearm bent upwards, the fist too far in front of the chest, okay? So that's something that you want to be aware of when you're going through stage one, or closing that out. Now, in stage two, it's the hip tuck. So what's actually happening here is, since I'm maintaining the stretch at the top of the spine, I'm also trying to roll the hips forward in order to stretch the bottom of the spine out and make it completely flat or straight, okay? For me to be able to do that, the knees have to bend forward, not down, but forward. And actually, this sensation that you have here in terms of the spine stretching is very similar to that of sitting on the edge of a chair, okay? Now, as you go through each stage, what you're doing is you're maintaining the vertical, all right? Here, my center of gravity is actually sinking. Now, in stage three, when I open up from the heels, what's happening is my center of gravity is actually moving backwards, and I'll show you. Now, it's moving backwards, however, I'm not leaning back. That's a common mistake that happens as well because people end up losing the hip tuck and so now they're leaning backwards. They're on their heels, okay? So I wanna make sure that I maintain the vertical, maintain the hip tuck, and I open up the feet. 
Now, when I go to stage four, that center of gravity is actually going to move the vertical forward, all right? And then I wanna make sure that I let everything sink because each transition that happens from stage to stage, there's a tendency of creating tension again, all right? So you, you may have to check in the beginning of, okay, am I still kind of relaxed? But as you continue to, to develop that skill of opening up the stance and holding the vertical, then what happens is that you want to make sure that you're maintaining that same amount of tension all the way throughout, okay? The other thing that I feel here is once I let everything sink, is that I actually feel the bottom of my foot stretch out. So imagine this is kind of naturally what you have with an arch and it stretches out so that there's balance between the balls of the feet and then the heel. And one of the checks that you can do is to grip the floor with your toes. As you can see I'm doing here, you'll probably just see very little movements that, that I'm doing. If I'm on my heels when I get to this fourth stage, such as this, Okay, you can see I'm leaning, and when I try to grip the, grip the floor with my toes, my, my center rocks. Okay, same thing goes for if I'm on the balls of my feet, I can't really grip the toes. They're already uh, jammed into the ground, all right? And so, again, you're gonna rock as well. So, the, the way that I know, and this is gonna take some time for you to be aware of, is that the arch, stretches so that the balls of the feet and the heels are both touching on the ground evenly. And when I grab the, or when I grip the, the floor with my toes, you can see there's actually a slight bend in the knees forward. There's a little bit of mobility in the knees, all right? That's what we kind of call a, a, a grace period, all right? Because there's a little bit of a compression. What that does is that when the force comes in, into your structure, it naturally, in order to maintain that vertical, it compresses, okay? And that's actually gonna be a very important concept to understand as you build upon your training. So hopefully some of those tips help you out. Um, if you have questions, I'll do my best to try and answer them in the comments section. Otherwise, uh, in the next video, we'll cover the punch and um, you know, remember some of these things that I talked about because they're going to carry over. All right. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you guys in the next video.